Hey guys, it's the Incendiaries here. Now, just before we begin today's episode, which at this point has already been finished, I just thought I would edit in a little part just so I could get one or rather two things out of the way, both of which are name suggestions. So, the first one. I will catch all fix for this first one. I don't know. I just, I feel like, I, I just kind of feel like Vulpix kind of feels right for this first nickname. And yeah, it's a nickname that I misread originally. I, I read it as something else. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have it. I have it now. So I'm going to catch Volfix and name it said nickname. So, yep, we've caught Volfix. Don't worry, it might not be straight away that I get to these names, but I can assure you I always remember to do these. So if I am a bit late, I am sorry, but yeah. So we've got Volfix, the fox Pokemon, fire type. As its body grows larger, its six warm tails become more beautiful with a more luxurious coat of fur. So... For this name, we're going to call you Make sure I don't name it wrong Resonance I read it as Resonate at first but R-E-S Yep, Resonance And I will evolve you at the start of the next episode just so I can get this clip kind of finished quickly. And I'll be back in a moment when we have our next Pokemon. Yep, we found a C dot. I am going to name this C dot the second name suggestion that I got recently. Now, this next name may not seem right for a C dot, but I feel like it does for a Shiftry, which, just like with Vulpix, I will indeed evolve at the start of the next episode. Let this be a lesson, do not try and do what I just did. <laughs> I only did that because it used the uh, Morning Sun, and I'm not really in the mood to deal with that any longer. <laughs> so, yeah. Seedot, the acorn Pokemon, is a grass type. Seedot lives in trees, hanging from the branches and leaching moisture. Rows of them can be found dangling from large young trees. For this one, we're going to give you... Like I said, this name is more for Shiftry than it is for uh, Seedot. So we'll call you... Good night. That is another name suggestion, and hopefully, you are okay with the Pokemon I picked. And yeah, at the start of the next episode, I will evolve both Vulpix and Seedot. So, without further ado, enjoy today's video. We got Turtwig! Cool! I'll accept that. And it's a female, so it's even rarer. That's really cool, actually. We got a female Turtwig. Okay. That's our way of starting an episode. Anyways, what's going on, guys? It's Nate Cinderace here, and welcome back to another video. For this video, we're going to be doing episode 41 of the Pokemon Violet playthrough. In the last episode, we found the second signpost for our orienteering exercise. 
We battled Kieran and Carmine at separate times. We saw the where this ogre Pokemon lives in the dreaded den, I think it was called. Just that Oni Mountain. And we are basically here getting ready for the festival. So we're gonna we have a couple of people we're gonna talk to first and then we will commence. Oh! I almost forgot. We we also bumped into Jack. Our homeroom teacher, who just so happened to come to Kitakami, do some research on the field, on basically some field work, and he gave us that egg, which could hatch into one of these Sinnoh starters, that being Turtle Egg, Chimchar, or Piplup. And I've got to say, I'm quite happy with the result. So yeah, let's begin, and I hope you're all enjoying the series so far. If you are, then please drop a wee like, drop a wee comment down below, check out the usual bio, and all that stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it's happening, according to this guy. What is? Good kids, bad kids, kids at heart. Kitakami Hall welcomes one and all to the Festival of Masks. Oh wait, it's not you? There's someone you speak to about a group. Here's the caretaker again. The Festival of Masks begins tonight at Kitakami Hall. Take your time and enjoy yourself. I shall. So hopefully you're all having a pretty good day. Today's been not bad for me. And can't complain. So could we start getting an egg, hatching it? And it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Back in the older games, it took forever to hatch one egg without a flame body Pokemon. No, it only took like less than five minutes, so. And that includes the last episode, suddenly, this is like going pretty much after the episode. But what's this? Mask. Could this be that ogre? They mentioned having a mask. And that does look like the mask that Kieran's wearing. Albeit small changes, but still. This is the Festival of Masks. Today is just the first day. It keep it will keep going for a while. So we saw this place last time. We saw it was kind of empty. I bet you didn't. I bet you don't have any festivals this big over in Paldea or whatever, right? Hmm. Depending, depending really on your definition of big. This could be seen as being small. Heh, <laughs> Knew it. See. Kitakami's just as good as any of your big shiny cities. It's okay, Nate Sindels, just ignore her. I'll snap a photo of you so you can remember this amazing night forever. Give me your Roto stick for a sec. Don't you have a phone as well? I suppose you, th you did say so we remember it, so come on you two, scooch in closer. Ow, you're stepping on my toes, sis. Oh, stop complaining. It'll only take a second. Okay, are you all ready? Say, Chansey! Blissey. Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> okay, now that's what I call a nice festival vibe. Festival of Masks is held so we can all honour the Royal Three. The Royal Three, not Royal Three. <laughs> the Royal. The brave heroes of Kitakami. Can't wait to show Arvin that photo. He will be jealous. Not of the festival, but the fact that his so-called little buddy is making friends with other people. The Royal Three are the Pokemon that once protected this land from the evil ogre, you know? Most of the kids in town wear masks of the Royal Three, like me. Did I mention there are heroes? You definitely look up to them. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? N nothing. I was just thinking it was funny that, like, you don't know anything about the ogre. What? I know the legends of Kitakami better than anybody. Pretty gutsy move of you to laugh at your big sis. S sorry. Ah, he's getting a couple of jabs. Kiki's still a little baby, so of course he thinks he's some, some kind of terrible monster's cool. 
He likes the ogre more than the wild tree. Uh, oh look, they've got they've got candy apples. Let's go check out the stalls. Candy apples, huh? Sometimes they're called caramel apples. Depends. So, yep. She's got one. He's making some sizzling fried noodles. There's the cotton can- uh, cotton- I was gonna say cotton candy. <laughs> Snow cones or shaved ice. The masks, I want one. I want to buy masks for no one's at the stall. Now there is. Yeah. What else do you have? You have uh, candy apples, uh, ice cream. Oh, that sounds jammy. I've just noticed the Toxo. I've never actually seen that there. I've seen the Zeppelin, but I've never seen the Toxo before. <laughs> That's cool. There's a Chimeco and the Tatsugiri. I remember seeing them. <laughs> but where? They're missing the red one. Yeah, they only have two of them. Thinking of you always, Rodney. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right here. Kieran, what have you got to say? Excuse me, two candy apples, please. You got it. Two candy apples coming right up. And he's wearing the same mask. Suppose there's only four different masks plus Pikachu and Eevee. Uh, here, Ned Sanders, you can have one. Thanks. Grandma gave me some pocket money, so it's no big deal. I love candy apples. You don't get to eat them every day, you know. Uh, I suppose that's true. Grandma always just makes us mochi as a snack. A mochi. Mochi, mochi. I'll say mochi. Yeah. There's even a Pokemon in Kitakami that looks like a little candy apple. Did you know that? Do I? It's on my team. His name is Unify. Hey, let's check out over there. And he runs off just as I could just be like this. He has a real ca uh, candy apple and it's huge. Come on, Diplin, let's go. Get out of the way. <laughs> There's a dust skill. I was looking for one in the other episode. Oh, you're actually quite fast. Yeah, why not? Best of all, no. Let's let Diplin walk with us for a while. Come on, you. You're a new Pokemon. You are like a candy apple. Or caramel apple, like I mentioned before. Ogre Austin. There we go, now it's open. It's a mini game of sorts. Uh, I might do it at some point, but I'm not gonna really do it now. Uh, where's Kieran? Where is he? Did I just uh, get lost? Diplin, where are we going? <laughs> I lost Kieran! Wait, I think I know, I think I know. Hurry up, you! <laughs> Diplin is actually quite fast. I think he is actually over here. Oh, there's a Clefairy outbreak here too, I just noticed that. Should have seen that in the last. There he is, I think. No, this isn't him, but it is someone that will give us something. Shh! Can you keep a secret? There's this selfie pose for when. People, you want to be like secretive. Everyone's doing it lately. Oh, well, using the camera app, you can use selfie emotes if you switch to the front facing camera. Don't shush me. <laughs> oh no, where did Kieran go? He ran over this way, I'm sure. Oh, there's a. Yeah, I know, but TM. Carmine, where did Kieran go? Nothing says festival like a bunch of super salty fried food. Come on, you're not helping! Come on, Diplin. Or should I say Unify? I should start calling you by that actual name. 
Okay, I even looked at this. There he is. Found him. After a while, I found him. <laughs> Step right up for a game of ogre ousting. So you want to have a go? Yeah. Hey, you're one of those kids that came all the way from Paldea, right? I can't very well take money from a guest. Have a go on the house. Oh, you're gonna try it, Nate Sindles? I'll uh, I'll show you from the safe, from a safe distance. You're up for a run of ogre roasting, huh? I did, I did one just now. It was pretty easy, for me that is. Oh, the lag. My score was six thousand three hundred and ninety. Think you can beat it? Not with this delay, I won't. I'm afraid. We'll get our nape sindles. Oh. Why not? We'll give it a shot. If I'm terrible at this, I'm sorry. I am dealing with a bit of delay. So, I'll, I can only do my best. I haven't even claimed the shiny that you get at the end of it. To be honest with you, I don't know. It's basically a wee berry collecting minigame. There are balloons to pop. You see them here, it will tell you how many of each colour you need. So it's like two, you only can carry so much, like at the top right corner is a counter. That will tell you how many berries you have in total. And you get some good prizes, you get mochi to raise stats, kind of like, like I said, the wings or feathers rather, and the vitamins. Now, because it's sort of the first level, it won't be too bad. So each bet, each balloon you pop is worth one berry of a certain kind. There's lychee berries, there's apricot berries. Uh, I can't remember the name of the other two. You can move at the start, but you can't ca collect any. So now when you get five of each, it gets progressively harder. Now tip is, hold on to as many berries as you can because if you collect them and put them in the little areas that we uh, deposited them in, wild Pokemon will come so that you get Pokemon like uh, Greedent, Squabbit, Munchlax, I think that's it actually, just those three that will come and uh, they'll do whatever they can to steal it off you. So it's important that you collect as many as you can but also, be quick about it. Because if you lose them, it's going to cost more time. And the faster you are, the more berries you get. Uh, the more items you get. So, Sarlacc berry, Apricot berry, Nietzsche berry, and I can't see the other one. So, we cleared that level. Like, you have until time runs out, basically, but they keep progressively adding more, um, more berries for you to get. And because they get harder, because they last for more, you can only carry so much. Oops. You've just got to plan out which ones you want to prioritize. So I won't be able to get all of the green ones, unfortunately. It's basically like that. It's, it's an easy enough minigame to learn. It's just, it's not as easy to complete. So there we go, you can't hold any more berries. I've got all the ones I need. If I didn't pick up that extra blue, I would have gotten that last green easily. It's okay. So there we go. We need one more blue. Oh no, we have an extra blue, that's right. So we need to get a green fast. I don't even know where the green ones are. There's one there. So it'll say something like, oh, um, there's a Pokemon that spawned coming to get your food. It's that kind of that, that kind of thing. And the best part is, you can get a shiny Pokemon out of it. After you complete the hardest level, oh, there's a couple of Pokemon. If you complete the hardest level, eh, we beat Carmine's uh, score. There's the Mochi, Health, Muscle, Resist, Genius. Yeah, they're, they're named the same. You can get like evolutionary items and a few other things. 
But if you complete the hardest level, then you get a shiny Munchlax out of it, which I have not claimed yet. I think it might have the mightiest mark. I could be wrong on that one, but you can get a shiny of it. That's cool. That was some fine dashing about. Let's see now. You scored seven. Oh, let's see now. <laughs> you scored 7,045 points. So here's your prize an XP charm. That is pretty good. Having one of these charms increases the XP points your Pokemon gets. It's a strange, stretchy charm that encourages growth. I, Carmine, Mozui's reigning champion of Ogre Balloon House Bursting, have been defeated? I think she actually beat me last time. Ah, I hate losing. I want to have another go to get even, but I'm all out of pocket money. Kiki. You go and beat Nathan Sanders for me. <laughs> no! What's that? You're talking, you're taking the side of an outsider over your own sister? That makes me so annoyed. I think I'm going to black out. Uh, sorry, she's causing, causing such a scene. Don't worry, I'll deal with her. Why don't you go wander about a bit in the meantime? Yeah, she is not one for losing. <gasps> it's that thing again. The one with the mask. I just realised the lights in the top left, they actually, I, I noticed them before, but I never noticed they actually have the symbols of the types on it. So, yeah. There's like, grass, fire, uh, water, psychic, fairy, ghost, rock, poison, fighting. What were the other types? Huh. But the other types. Whatever. Which I guess I'd quickly. No, it's the same types. I wonder why. I get some of them. I get some of them. So we should let Diplin out. Unify, come on. So here is this thing. It must be the ogre. The very one we've been hearing quite a bit about. Looks happy, must be enjoying the festival. But now, they've caught sight of us, who knows about them. Pawn. A mysterious child is staring at you from behind their mask. Are you enjoying the festival? Ponyo. Hey Nate Sanders, listen to this, it's nuts. Kiki's no use to, use to all. Zero talent from uh, for Austin Ogres, I'm telling you. <laughs> poor Kieran, a poor child, as I said. Hey, who was that? Chase after that mysterious kid. We've seen this part in the trailer for the Teal Mask, but for those of you who haven't, here's the full version. Wait, Nate Sanders, you shouldn't run off on your own. Hey, new kid, that goes for you too. <gasps> your mask. It's quite a big mask, actually. You should come back. The mountain's dangerous at night. Poor thing's terrified. Yep, we found the teal mask. How fitting. The teal mask. A teal mask patterned after the face of an ogre. Ogre Pond dropped it while fleeing up the stairs after visiting the Festival of Masks. So, it is confirmed that it is indeed Ogre Pond, the ogre that people apparently fear. Who was that? Where did that kid come from? 
I don't think it was a kid. I know that for certain. What are you talking about? Wait, do you mean that kid we just saw? They ran off towards the mountain? C could that have been the ogre from the story on all the signboards? Are you saying that story was true? Hmm, there's more to a story than just seeing the existence of something. Ogre Pond seemed quite timid. Not one to cause a mark. I mean, they did drop a mask, so though, so they really must be made cinders. Sis, what are you guys doing over here? Oh, we just bumped into the ogre. Hey, wait, stop, stop, stop. What? Why are you yelling all of a sudden, sis? It's nothing. It's nothing you could be interested in at all, I swear. Huh? Oh, I get it. I bet you are making fun of me behind your back. Well, I'm just going to head back to the festival. Ooh, at least, he, at least he didn't figure out what we were really talking about. But why don't you want him to know? Don't scare me like that, blabbing for the whole world to hear. Don't you have any filter? See, Kiki really likes the ogre. Like, really, really, really likes it. So if he found out we'd seen the ogre without him, I guess I was afraid he'd feel bad, you know? Feel left out or something. Am I overthinking it? Besides, I don't want him running up the mountain to follow the ogre at this hour either. Well, in any case, we already lied about it, and that's that. Let's keep this whole thing our little secret, okay? And maybe hold off on showing Kiki that mask you just picked up too. Right, so I get where you're coming from about protecting him by not letting him go up there, but at the same time, that's not a good, that's not cool just kind of like hiding it from him because that's something that Kieran is ambitious about, is finding that ogre. You should check out the festival before you go. I thought it was an item. Yeah, okay. Come on, Zeppelin. Let's go. I should call you Unify, because that's your name. Come on, Unify. How long have we been so far? We've had no battles, although I did get lost at one point. Still got some time. Never mind. Come on, Unify. Where are you? You're still here, good. I still can't get over how fast Diplin is as a whole. There's a Chimeco. The old signboard, yep. Hey, look at you cutting corners, Zap. Uh, Applin? <laughs> look at you cutting corners, uh, Unify. What are those? They look like berries. Which would you like? Or balls or something. What are they? What are they? <laughs> it's hard to pick. Are they bells? I don't know. Okay, here's Kieran. Please don't be mad. I've had enough of the festival. Yeah. Well then, guess we should head back home. I'll walk you back to the community center. I mean, it is on your on the way anyway, so it's nice to have a bit of company. But he seems quite chilled. Either that or he's kind of trying to hide his emotions. <coughs> Excuse me. What are you got to say, Blair? Uh, Blair? The candy fruits at the festival masks had such an interesting flavour. Yeah, is that it? It's just everyone else here. Where's the boy, the other boy? Hey, there he is, the one that was sick. And I'll leave, leave him to it. And Carmine has come here to welcome us. There you are, Nate Sindels. 
just cause we didn't agree to meet doesn't mean you get to keep me waiting. What do you mean? You just uh, you just got here. So, uh, you see, I wanted to talk to you for a bit. You hadn't told anybody about the, you know, thing that happened yesterday, right? No, I have not. Don't worry. You better not be lying. If I find out you blabbed, I'm gonna make you swallow a coughing hole. Yikes. You still have that thing we picked up at the stairs, right? My grandpa knows a lot about the village's history. We should go talk to him about what happened yesterday. You know where my house is, right? You see there? Don't keep me waiting. Let's show grandpa the, you know, the thing we found. And off we go, but there's been no sight nor saying of Kieran. So what's going on? There's Carmine and their grandfather. And there's a TM, which I will quickly grab. Apple Hills. No. Mozui Town. Okay. What have you got to say about it? Good morning to you, Nate Sindles. Good morning to you too. There's Kieran. Hey, Nate Sindles. Good morning. He's awake, huh? Wanna go see the last signboard? Kiki, go find some place else to be. Nate Sindles has got business with me. But I want to know the rest of the story. Seriously? He's spending all his time with you? That's so unfair. You could be such a jerk. What, did you just call me? <laughs> What's his deal? Kiki should know better than to talk back to me like that. That's enough, Carmine. Be kind to your younger brother. I was being kind. It's not like I hit him or anything. Oh, God. Anyways, we got more important things to discuss. Right, Nate Sindles? Come on. You gotta show Grandpa that thing you have. Take a look at the adventure guide. <laughs> yeah, let's see what it says here. Hmm, and this is... No, not that! I'm talking about the thing we found yesterday! Wow, she is not happy! Okay, okay. Fine. Show him the mask. Could this be? This mask? It belongs to that poor ogre. Where did you find this? We bumped into it yesterday. Yoga, I mean. Yesterday, at the festival of masks, I tried talking to it all nice and everything, but it dropped the mask and... Yeah. But he just called it poor. I never would have thought that the ogre would still be gracing our festival with his presence. Sounds like he knows something. <laughs> huh? What do you mean, still? I thought the ogre was a scoundrel that attacked the village. I suppose it's time I told you, Carmine. You see, the truth of what happened with that ogre is the other way around. The other way around? What do you mean? You should hear this too, Nate Sindels. You should also meet... You, should, you also met that poor ogre, or Ogapon, as it's rightly named. Yeah, I feel like we should have learned the name there instead of through an item, but whatever. Let me tell you the true story has passed down through my family for generations. So we're gonna hear the real story. What is this? What is really going on? This is going to be a bit of a long story to tell. Is that all right? Sure, I've got to know what's going on. This ogre fawn doesn't seem like one that would be vicious. The story has been passed down in our family by word of mouth. I learned it from my father. It's a story of truths, a story that must never be told to the rest of the village. You must never speak of it to others. Okay.
A long, long time ago, a man and an ogre came to Kitakami from a foreign land. The people of the village feared the man and the ogre, who looked so different from them. And so they refused to let travellers come anywhere near the village. The man and the ogre were saddened that the villagers did not welcome them. But they were happy just to have each other. They settled quietly in a cave on the mountain. There was one villager who pitied the two travellers, the village mask maker. He made several masks for the man and the ogre. The masks were brilliant works adorned with gems the man brought from somewhere far away. By wearing the ma these masks, the traveller could hide their true faces and mingle with the villagers. The man and the ogre were overjoyed. They thanked the mask maker for his kindness. Wearing the masks, the man and the ogre started secretly joining the festival, the village festival. The mysterious pair soon became the talk of the village because of their brilliant masks. In fact, rumours about them quickly spread far and wide, even to distant lands. There's different masks there, I've seen Squirtle and Hoot Hoot, and I don't know if that's Sobble. That's interesting, where's those masks? But the rumour of exquisite shining masks attracted more than just innocent curiosity. A group of greedy Pokemon soon made their way to the land of Kitakami. Royal Tree. These Pokemon sneaked into the cave in which the man and the ogre lived and tried to make off with the masks which were carefully stored away. The man happened to be there. He managed to hold onto one of the masks. But he was not strong enough to protect them all. The Pokemon stole the other three masks. Several hours later, when the ogre returned to the cave, it found its beloved home in ruin. All that was left were the signs of a struggle and a tail mask. The ogre donned the mask and went down to the village, perhaps in search of its friend. It found the greedy Pokemon there, gloating over their stolen masks, and defeated them. The villagers, of course, had no idea what just happened, nor why. All they saw was the raging ogre, and they felt great fear. The villagers thought the three Pokemon had fallen trying to protect the village from the ogre. To honour the sacrifice, the villagers named them the Royal Three and interred them with care. Wounded and weak, the ogre returned to its cave, alone and with great sadness. That's terrible! Ogre Pond didn't deserve that, and the Royal Three, they're the worst. The story is everyone the story everyone's been told is complete opposite for the truth. They gotta hear about this. Calm yourself, Carmine. I told you already to keep it to yourself. But Grandpa The villagers believe their own version of the history. They revere the Royal Three, so how would they hear to how would they react to being told that they were they got it all wrong? They'd probably get angry? Exactly. Back when this all first occurred, the mask maker, that is to say, our ancestor, tried desperately to tell the truth of the matter. But nobody would take him seriously. In fact, it said he was persecuted as a hered heretic. Ooh, that's really got my blood boiling. 
In the end, the mask maker chose to protect his descendants, us, by keeping his mouth shut. However, he kept the truth alive, passing down from generation to generation as a family secret. I see. Kiki doesn't know the whole story yet, does he? He shouldn't, no. I've certainly never spoken to him about it. Why do you ask? I don't know. He just really seems to like the ogre. He's practically obsessed. And he's tra been trying to get one up, trying to one up me as if he knows more about Ogre Pond than I do. Well, I can't say what's going on with the boy, but he's always was a sensitive child. It wouldn't surprise me if he somehow intuit intuited the truth. Again, another word. <laughs> I promise to tell Kieran the whole story when the time is right. Until then, take care not to breathe a word to the truth to anybody. Okay, Grandpa. I really can't tell Kiki we met the ogre. About that mask you showed me, I noticed the jewel on its forehead was chipped. I might be able to fix it. Would you mind leaving the mask with me for a while? Sure. Oh, huh. Maybe it got chipped when it fell down the stairs. Since Grandpa's offering, let's get it all nice and fixed up before we give it back to Ogre Fawn. So, we gave him the teal mask. Don't you worry, I'll sure to take good care of this. Ah, oh, he was listening in the whole time. He must have known. And this was just the confirmation and all the reason for him to go and see Ogre Pond. I want to see Ogre Pond again. Oh, excuse me. But getting his max mask fixed will have to come first. For now, we should carry on with the orienteering before Kiki gets suspicious. I bet we'll, we'll find Kiki just killing time somewhere in town. Hmm. I don't know, but I'll tell you this though, we're coming up to basically the end of the episode so I want to get at least one battle in before we do just that. So where are we going anyways? Let's do this part first and find at least one trainer. I see a TM up there but I'll get it later. Yeah, let's talk to Kieran. Find one trainer at battle and then call it a day. Oh, what? Uh, hey, any Sindels? Oh, Carmine was right about one thing. He was killing time in town. So I was going to ask, what were you and my sister just um, talking about? This and that, I guess. Oh, uh, I see. So, about those signs, the last one is a bit of a hike away. It's in the Paradise Barrens on the other side of Oni Mountain. We'll need to head over the mountain and go down towards the northwest. You go on ahead, I'll catch up. <sighs> Why? Why did you lie to me? He knows. Kieran's not dumb. He knows that something's going on. He believed this whole time. I didn't realize Carmen. This must be our partner. All right. So that must be. He must have known. But now that he knows for sure, he doesn't know how to feel. He wants people to be a bit more open with them. So yeah, so that this is more of a battle this episode, we will battle uh, a trainer. First trainer we see, who we have not battled, we will battle, and there's a lot of appling, I couldn't avoid it. Okay, appling. Sorry, I've already got a diplin on the team. Unity, eh, Unify. Unity was if it was a girl. That's a Bill Sprout, smashing, oh no. 
that was uh, quite an experience there my ride on sunny day where is a trainer around here One trainer. That's all I ask. One trainer. Hey, quick ball. Awesome. There's a Pikachu. Huh, reminds me of Pikachu. The Pikachu I caught a while ago. Bingo, trainer! Ekans, hello. The Wistful Fields. The Pokemon in the Wistful Fields are strong. I'll check whoever you're ready to go there. Okay, Konami. With a spin around. Okay, one little power gem does the handy job of taking you down with one hit. Nice one, Ella leveled up. Rockcraft. Yeah, but discharge won't hurt anyone except Rockcraft, unfortunately. No, that didn't take it down, unfortunately, so... Yikes, that was a bit... sore. There we go, Amphi knows what he is doing. You're more than ready. Thank you, I'm glad you have every bit of faith in me. So yeah, we learned more about Kitakami, their customs with the festival, with the ogre ousting, we met the ogre himself, and most importantly, we learned the actual story of what was going on with, well, their history. You should spend more time in the wistful fields. If you have, if you have to battle you, if I have to battle you to convince you, I will. What do you mean more time? The first time I just went through. The second time, it's not really. That's actually quite cool bands. C dot. Good thing we have a couple of moves for that. There's a church above watching us. I want that church above now. Yikes. <laughs> that was quite a finish. I want that charger bug. There's a pseudo bro. I'm gonna fa finish this battle quickly and we can catch that charger bug. I like charger bug. Shiny charger bug's cool. Nice red. Yeah, I battled many pseudo widow in my day. So I know how to take you down. It's sunny, too bad I don't have a Scarlet Pokemon because they would have benefited just nicely from the sun. I can't really see the top of it, unfortunately. There we go. Two levels up for us. And Lotad to finish this off. Yeah, for a low tad. Yes, Charge Bug, I know you can catch it now. 
<laughs> well, did I convince you? You convinced me that that charger bug definitely wants to be with us. It stuck with us the whole time. Okay, we're doing the damage. The problem is, yeah. Oh, Amphi, next one. One more discharge will do just nicely. Yeah, that charger bug is good. Easy enough. Hey, we're all level 60 and above. Yay. Charger bug, the battery Pokemon. Bug electric. As it digests fallen leaves, it generates and stores electricity, which it can discharge from the tips of its jaws. I'm going to call you... Vault. There you go guys, you don't have to have a poke you don't have to catch Kitakami Pokemon for them to be in your team. Volt is proof of that. Now I am definitely ending the episode now <laughs> after I run a few feet. There we go. Anyways, thank you so much for watching today's video. Next time we will find the last same post and learn the rest of the story as to what the folk here feel is the definitive story of Ogre Pond and the Royal, th uh, Royal, there I go again, Loyal 3. So that's us, thank you so much for watching today's video, if you enjoyed it then please like the video, comment on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. And also check out my Twitter that I'm active on on a regular, it's the same name as the channel, Nate Sundries, the link to that is on the channel itself. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.